<laughs> See, it's one thing you learn quick. Watch out for your friends, especially the ones uh, who are close to you. Jerry Bailey and Randy Moss join me here. So, Jerry, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you have back at Enzo if you want. I, I'm just shocked that his wife agreed to help him turn on a computer because I know he's not smart enough to do that or the iPad or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, winner. Oh. The winner. I love it. I love it. Hey, Jerry, before we go any further, happy anniversary. It is 27 years ago today on the first day of May, the first Saturday of May. 1993, that Sea Hero, ridden by Jerry Bailey, won the Kentucky Derby, one of your two Kentucky Derbies. So happy anniversary, Jerry. Uh, thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, I'm glad my wife's not in the room. She asked me uh, what I thought. I said, don't even bother coming. I've got no chance. So um, <laughs> that was kind of bittersweet <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, at uh, least she doesn't remind you of it, right? No, it, you know, luckily I won one a few years later that she was president, so it kind of took a little bit of the sting out of it. Uh, but it, it's, it was a magical moment for any later, jockey to cross the wire first. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. R Randy, uh, you, we always talk about this, usually in a production meeting right around this time. We talk about how many years in a row you've been to the Derby and how many derbies have been a part of your life. You've got to feel as much as anyone that absence of – the joys of the Kentucky Derby right around this time right now. Oh, definitely. Uh, I've missed one Kentucky Derby since my first Derby back in 1980 uh, when I was in the newspaper business. I missed the 95 Derby. So this would be, would have been, I don't know what we're going to call it if we're not at Churchill Downs, but this would have been uh, my 40th Kentucky Derby. And ironically, through a very bizarre set of, of circumstances, Mike, in my first Kentucky Derby in 1980, I watched the race sitting shoulder to shoulder with Red Smith, the famous turf rider, who had no idea who I was, just some little, some young kid with a, with, with a moppy haircut <laughs> back then. But, yeah, that was my first Kentucky Derby That's in 1980, so cool. genuine well, rest. Well, my, my treat is that I get to sit next to these guys to watch the Derby. And I don't know if we have a picture that I sent to, uh, to our production group this uh, – this morning, but there's a picture as we're watching the Derby and the horses leave the gate and uh, Larry Coleman says they're off in the Kentucky Derby. We have a spot there right off that sweeping first turn where you see thousands of people, the twin spires and the 20 horses. And I love taking that picture the last three years that I've been in that seat. And I, I will miss that so much because that, that stampede, that roar, the crowd, everything Randy, you first, then Jerry. That, that's one of the most, uh, one of the coolest moments of the sports year, and we have as good a vantage point for it as anyone at Churchill Downs. It's the, it's the stampede of horses running around the first turn with the iconic twin spires in the background. It's the walkover that we get a chance to be almost in the middle of from our first turn set as the horses right. make that famous walk from the barn area with all their connections to the, to the, to the paddock. Uh, there's nothing like it in sports. Yeah, for, for me, it's uh, a, a bit of calm, actually, watching them, because when I was riding, that, is, that particular point in the race is one of the most dangerous because everybody's, quote-unquote, jockeying for position, and it's really rough, and uh, you kind of hold your breath till you get around that turn. But uh, it's a totally different feel doing it as a broadcaster because it's just it's surreal watching them go quiet, quiet, and then the rush by you, and then quiet again. It is something special. Uh, guys, let's talk about the sport right now uh, because there has been horse racing at some tracks around the country. There's actually a pretty big race this Saturday, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Churchill Downs, Jerry, has announced that they are set to reopen here in about a week and a half. So what are you hearing and sensing as you listen to the conversation about restarting horse racing in different parts of the country? Well, as you, say, as you say, I'm down here in South Florida, and they have been racing. Uh, they have never stopped down here in, in Hallandale. Uh, Churchill Downs is going to operate in phases. They're going to bring the horses in, I think, from the Louisiana region and then the, uh, uh, the Arkansas region and then other regions throughout. And then, then they'll populate, and then they'll run spectatorless. Uh, I think everybody, if they can run, is willing to run spectatorless for quite a while. Um, hopefully that we can get through this initial phase of opening these different racetracks without a recurrence uh, of the COVID uh, infections. But I, th I think every racetrack in America is anticipating opening. And while it's not optimum that there's no fans allowed, 
I, I think they're happy just to be running when they do. Well, well, Mike, horse Ready? racing is in a very it's in a very unique position among uh, among American sports in that mm -hmm. it's probably the best equipped of any sport to continue during this pandemic for a for a variety of reasons. Uh, but a lot of the tracks that we've seen that are running right now and that have been running in the last month and a half are tracks that were already racing uh, when when the when the real heart of this of this pandemic broke out across the country. In the case of Churchill Downs, the reason they had to delay their opening is just a concern, an un understandable concern of the state of Kentucky and the people of Louisville. And suddenly this massive influx of not horses, they're not the problem, but the people taking care of the horses. I mean, Jerry mentioned mm -hmm. that they're gonna come into Churchill Downs staggered, like from the fairgrounds in New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans has been such a, a viral hotspot that for the Arkansas Derby coming up uh, tomorrow, trainers of horses right that are themselves based in new orleans are not even allowed to walk into the oakland park grandstand because they've been barred from being there because of the of the the status of the of the virus in in the new orleans area so that's mm. the real concern that there's been but churchill downs has found a way to work through that so the Derby, and I should have put this at the beginning, the Derby, for those who don't know, has been moved from the first Saturday in May to the first Saturday in September tentatively. Uh, fans or not, obviously those questions are way down the line. And we're still uncertain where the Preakness and the Belmont Stakes will end. There's a possibility the Derby will not be the first, could be the last jewel of the Triple Crown, or obviously could be the middle as well. We don't know any of that for certain just yet. But to that Arkansas Derby, and Randy, I'll let you go first and then Jer, there are going to be some quality horses because the plan of how do you lay out the schedule to the Kentucky Derby is obviously like everything else completely changed given that the Derby's four months later than it usually is. Definitely. And Oakland made a very wise decision uh, when all this started shaking out and when the Kentucky Derby was, was rescheduled to Labor Day weekend to move the Arkansas Derby. It was originally scheduled to be run on April the 11th. And Oakland had another race called the Oakland Invitational Stakes that was scheduled to be run on May the 2nd. And when all this happened, Oakland just flip-flopped the two and now has delayed the Arkansas Derby to be run tomorrow. And as a result, it's gotten just this massive influx of horses uh, and it's split into two divisions. They had 22 horses that were entered in the Arkansas Derby. And to the benefit of, of every racing fan, they've split it into two divisions. So now Bob mm -hmm. Mafford's tandem of superstar horses charlatan and the doll both get to compete in the arkansas derby in in different legs and, and both of them are undefeated charlatan two for two nadal three for three nadal won the prep race for the arkansas derby at oakland park earlier this season but they're not even the leading point getters charlatan has no points at this point the leading point earner right now for the Kentucky Derby is a horse named Tis the Law, who completed his preparation down here in Florida. As a matter of fact, Florida got all their prep races in because they never stopped running. And Tis the Law, winning, winner of the, Arca, of the Florida Derby, now is atop the point standings. And, and his trainer, Barkley Tag, who trained Funny Side in 2003 to win the Derby. He's waiting on him to see what the rest of the year, what, what the yet rest of the schedule leading up to the September Kentucky Derby uh, how it will unfold. Yeah, and Jerry mentions the points, it's always significant. How horses qualify for the Kentucky Derby is a points list, and so that will certainly change with different races being moved around the calendar. And, and then there's the other part of the equation, was, which, which we talked about with Edzo yesterday. Randy, we, we may see different horses in September than we would in May, because yeah. those four months for three-year-old thoroughbreds can totally change what the horse is about. Oh, completely, Mike. I mean, all you have to do is, is look back to, uh, to a couple of the well-known horses of the 2000s. There was a horse called Tis Now in, uh, in 2000, 20 years ago, who on this day, on this weekend, when the Kentucky Derby was run first Saturday in May, had never won a race. And by the, by the time the year was over, he had won the Breeders' Cup Classic. So if a similar situation had existed in 2000, he might have been the favorite in a September Kentucky Derby. And then uh, four years ago, uh, there was a horse called Arrogate, that Bob, or five years ago, that Bob Baffert trained in 2015. Same thing. He had never won a race for Saturday in May. 
and winds up winning the Breeders' Cup Classic. So horses mature considerably from spring of their three-year-old season to fall. It, it's, it's kind of the difference, Mike, between, let's say, uh, a, a college football player that's just a freshman and uh, a rookie in the NFL. A considerable amount of development from A to B, and we see that with racehorses as well. It's a huge difference. Can I get your Arkansas Derby picks? Jerry, you first. <laughs> Randy always makes fun of me. But look, at Mike, I look at this as if I were still riding. Who would I want to ride? Because that was the whole point, try and pick right. the best horse right. in the race. I would pick both of Baffer's horses. He comes in there with a huge, hugely strong hand. Charlatan in the first division and Nadal in the second division. Although I think Nadal has a tougher time. It's a little harder uh, race in terms of this competition than Charlatan's. But I think they both are odds on. I think they both have a great chance to win. See, this is the same thing that I have to deal with on our NBC telecast, Mike. Jerry always gets to go first when he yes, makes his picks. See, so, so that right. makes it sound like I'm like right. tagging on to Jerry always, right? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. the, the two mm-hmm. bathroom horses are, uh, are, are standouts in here, you know, so I, it, it would be very difficult to pick against them. And I'm glad, by the way, you've got the, uh, you've got the Bert and Ernie references in there, just so there's no confusion. Jerry I, I is Bert. Right. Exactly. Jerry is the conservative, okay. <laughs> buttoned up guy. I don't know if he has a paperclip collection, but he's the guy that's, you know, that's always, re- you know, oh gosh. straight, straight laced. I'm Ernie. I'm the guy that doesn't know what time the Thank production you. meetings are, doesn't know what time the show begins necessarily. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it's true. very, very, very well named. <laughs> All of the above is true. Well, the good news is we get to do this again tomorrow. First Saturday in May, we're going to look back at American Pharaoh's 2015 win in the Kentucky Derby League, one of the Triple Crown. And then there is another virtual race, uh, the Triple Crown Challenge, the Kentucky Derby folks are putting together, <laughs> KentuckyDerby.com. Folks can also wager on it. Uh, it's being matched by a million dollars to the folks at Churchill Downs. About 15 seconds. Randy, then Jerry, give me a pick here of the 13 Triple Crown winners in this virtual race. Whoa, whoa. you mean I get to go first? Okay. Uh, Secretariat. Yeah, you is, complained. I'm uh, helping pop- you. <laughs> if it's not Man of War, he's not on this list because he didn't win the Triple Crown. Secretariat would be the best horse of all time. So he will win if this thing has any cr- uh, credibility at all. Knowing that Randy would pick okay. Secretariat, the favorite, the low hanging fruit, I'm going to go with Citation. Uh, Triple okay. Crown winner. The first one in 1948, uh, the last one rather, in 1948, before Secretariat. One, 25 years later, I'm going with Big Psy over Big Red. Awesome. Well, we will see you guys tomorrow, 3 Eastern NBC, for our show for Saturday in May. We relive Farrow. We also do some current horse conversation. And then the Arkansas Derby is right on NBCSN tomorrow night, uh, right after our show is done. We look forward to all that. Guys, we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you on NBC. Thanks again, boys. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye.